hello everybody and welcome back to my youtube channel fifth hideaway and in today's video we are going to be talking about melody martinez's k-12 album so in my last video i did on k-12 the film it was strictly about the film and i didn't really dive too much into the songs itself so i decided why not do that today now i did get my ticket for melanie's trilogy concert in miami i almost didn't get it but i got my i got my ticket i got my outfit and i decided let me finish the series so here we are now if you are going to melanie's concert june 19th in miami let me know in the comment section my outfit and wig is on the way i am going to be doing melanie's detention look it is my favorite outfit from the k-12 album and i decided to do that look so if you're going let me know in the comment section we can meet up and i'll see y'all there now i hope you guys enjoy this video let's get started The first song on the album is called Wheels on the Bus, and it sets the tone for the film as well. I was a bus rider in high school, and let me tell you, the video for Wheels on the Bus very much captures the essence of what it's like to be on a bus. It is very loud, it is very chaotic, everybody's doing everything, everybody's saying everything, and Melanie Martinez was able to capture the essence of what it's like to be a bus rider however i do think that the specific like setting was more perfect for like after school is over and everybody's going home but she still does a good job at capturing that essence her lyrics are very visual and they capture the chaoticness of what is going on in the video you have two boys yelling behind her and she's scared you have sexual activity going on between two students. You also have smoking happening as well as just unsafe behavior like getting out of your seat and putting your behind on the glass. Like who does that? Now, even though all of this is happening and the bus driver is even looking at everything happening, for some reason they don't care. And by they, I mean the authority figures, the administration, the school bus driver, they do not care because it doesn't bother them or concern them for some reason now when i was in school if you got in trouble on the bus you were suspended from riding the bus so my school definitely cared i don't know if y'all school <laughs> cared but mine definitely did however in this instance nobody really cared even though they knew what was going on and crybaby didn't really want to say anything because if she did i'm pretty sure she would be outcasted even more especially because she was being bullied by one of the popular girls kelly like throughout the film class fight is about how crybaby is jealous of kelly and brandon's relationship it's kind of similar to pacify her where a boy is an attractive relationship with a girl he's only with for sexual gratification in Will's on the Bus, there's a guy named Brandon who gets on the bus and is entranced with Crybaby because of her originality and her individualism. But Kelly ends up stealing him away and now Crybaby is debating on stealing him back from Kelly in a physical fight. Now in the video, her and Brandon have a natural chemistry towards each other and Brandon is attracted towards Crybaby because of how different she is. And Kelly is jealous of this, so she is the one who technically starts the fight with Crybaby in the video after seeing her and Brandon together on the playground. Mind you, Brandon was the one who actually approached Crybaby and was making efforts to try and get to know her, but Kelly didn't see that. She only saw Crybaby and Brandon together and automatically assumed that Crybaby was trying to steal him away, which the lyrics suggest that she was trying to do so but the video makes it seem like crybaby is innocent of all guilt when in reality she really isn't the lyrics suggest that crybaby was the antagonist and lost brandon because of her jealousy see if you listen to the song crybaby is contemplating on how she wants to steal brandon back and she wants to do that by fighting kelly and she 
technically has this imaginary conversation with her mom and dead dad about what to do and her dad is telling her to fight him and her mom is telling her to kind of let it go however she does end up fighting kelly and brandon sees her as a monster because crybaby let her jealousy get the better of her now the principle which is the third song in the k-12 album is about corrupt authority figures that don't care about anyone but themselves and they make decisions that doesn't benefit anybody but them this song to me is a double entendre towards politics and how the government likes to make decisions that only benefits them and not everyone else specifically women in this case the lyrics go really well with the video's double meaning and its relatability to the political climate of 2017 since this song came out in 2017 and in my opinion it's still relatable to this day see in 2017 there was a specific person as president of the united states and the principal is a call out to this person melanie is telling him and we all know who him is you know we're not gonna say his name that he doesn't understand how the actions that he's making affects everybody not just him and if he continues with that foolishness the people will stand against him i believe the same can be said in today's political climate with everything that's going on we need to talk about project 2025. he says you're not going to be a dictator are you i said no 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 other than day one. Now in Florida, they're getting you for felony littering if you're homeless. And the tent, what did you say for him? The tent and all your belongings are part of the garbage. Ooh. So Israeli and American troops disguise themselves as humanitarian aid trucks launching from the pier, which America said it built for humanitarian aid to get into Gaza, infiltrate a refugee camp, kill 200 people, to rescue four and this is being presented as a victory by the media now i can't blame the current president of the united states for the shambles that he was given however he is responsible for what he is currently doing right now or lack thereof doing and it's so disheartening and tiresome to be honest and it makes me just want to move to finland and call it a day in my opinion now before the song even begins the principal and the teacher from Crybaby's class are patronizing a trans teacher for being transgender before firing her because they think that her lifestyle will affect the children in a negative way and they want to keep it a you know clean they want to keep the school clean and cleanse like you aren't corrupt yourselves like this teacher was literally doing drugs in her classroom okay she was snorting chalk we all saw it now i could go on and on about the political climate of today 2017 and the teacher that was snorting chalk but that would be a long video in itself so let's move on the next song in the album is show and tell and it is about the lack of privacy celebrities have in the limelight see celebrities are always under constant supervision and scrutiny by the media and the public show and tell is melanie's way of saying we are all the same regardless of status yet you treat us like we're a commodity because of our celebrity status you think that you have a right to my personal life and my privacy which you don't and you are constantly always telling me how i look like this and how i should look like this and this that and the third now a good example of this in my opinion is currently what's going on with megan the stallion while she's on her tour see right now there is a deep fake video circulating online and people are calling it a stunt to drive sales which doesn't make sense to me because her ticket sales sold out months before this deep fake even came out i could give so many more examples but again it'll be another video in itself so let us move on and continue Nurse's Office is about how teachers will turn a blind eye to students being bullied and how they don't really pay attention to mental illnesses, only the physical illness. In the song, Crybaby is being bullied by a classmate and when she asks if she can switch seats, the teacher basically tells her no. However, if Crybaby is sick or is feigning a illness, then the teacher suddenly wants to pay attention to her. Crybaby is honestly tired of being bullied, and she is tired of school to the point where she wishes that she wasn't even at school anymore. As somebody who was bullied in and out of school ever since I was in elementary school, 
trying to ignore the bullying and reporting it can only do so much to help. I'm just grateful that my teachers and my administration actually listened to me when I said I was being bullied by someone. But not everybody is so lucky. Crybaby, she is honestly done with being in school because of the hostile environment. So she starts faking physical illnesses to go to the nurse's office, since that is like a hideaway to her. I can honestly say I didn't pick up on this theme because I never actually took in the song's lyrics. But now that I know it, it makes much more sense. Drama Club is a critique on gender roles in society. In the K-12 film, Crybaby is given a role that she does not want. Now, the role that the theater teacher gave her was to be, I think, a wife, which is much more domesticated than Crybaby wants to play. It's not something that she wants to do. And when she asked for a different part, you know, like the um, CEO of a company or like president, she was ridiculed by her teacher and a male classmate for wanting a more sophisticated role. And when she stood up for herself, she was forced into the role that she didn't even want to play. I looked on the internet for some more explaining about the specificities of the lyrics and a Reddit user, shout out Para Charlotte, she did a really good job explaining the specificities of the lyrics in Drama Club and how they could possibly relate to the public scrutiny Melanie herself received during her crybaby era. Now, I did do some Googling, and one of the articles I read by Student Life from 2015 stated that Tag Your It and Mad Hatter, which are two songs on Melanie's Crybaby album, are harmful to victims of SA and people with mental illnesses because the songs essentially misrepresent what it's like to go through these things. Another article I read from Affinity titled Melanie Martinez Stops Sexualizing Children, which was released on June 28, 2016, basically states that Melanie Martinez sexualizes childlike things such as pacifier, sippy cup, and a baby doll, and she is encouraging the association of these specific objects with consensual sexual activity. I also found a Tumblr post from an anonymous user stating that I don't understand how people like Melanie Martinez when she sexualizes children with her entire aesthetic. Isn't one of the reasons why people don't Reina is because she promotes the sexualization of underage girls? We can't have double standards here. Melanie has literally taken sexy pictures with a pacifier in her mouth along with teddy bears, baby bottles, and baby dolls. Now, I also did find a post on Quora asking about how nobody notices Melanie is always talking about sleeping with children in her songs. Now, a lot of the things that I have read are related to Melanie sexualizing children. And I think a lot of these critiques, if you want to call it that, are confused about what her songs are about or talk about. So we're going to move on to the next thing that I found, which was very, it was definitely something. So while I was at work bored, I found a website called musicboard.app and it has 879 total ratings on Melanie Martinez, not her discography, Melanie Martinez herself with a 3.7 out of 5 average rating. Let's get into some of the comments. The first comment titled Gross was published in 2020 stating nothing on God's earth will ever be able to express how much I hate Melanie Martinez. Her songs all sound exactly the same and she gives off a very very bad message to a very very young audience that I feel like she doesn't realize she has. Although I do applaud her for touching important topics, she definitely romanticizes them with her music, which kind of takes away the point about talking about them in the first place. That aside, I just generally don't like her music or voice, which is more of a me thing, but I definitely think she gets praised for things that in reality, she is just casting a bad light on. Also, she sexualizes children and the concept of youth, which is messed up. 
Another user wrote, I've heard two albums by her. I had an ear infection after I listened to Portals and I am absolutely sure that listening to that pile of rugged leaves mixed with an alcoholic sludge is the reason why. Unless people really want me to, I am never listening to her again. I am curious though, if you like Melanie, how? Literally, how? And it is just a bunch of this. You know, her ass used to grow up and write music about taxes. I liked her in middle school for about two months, but now I don't know what it is. I absolutely cannot fucking stand the sound of her voice. Every fucking time I say I don't like her, some goofy ass Hello Kitty profile picture Melanie fan page is summoned and fights me to the death. A lot of this is just literally critiques on Melanie and some throw in critiques about how she sexualizes children, about uh, portals and her visuals. It's just... I don't think people get it and that's okay if you don't get it you don't get it however this whole thing about her sexualizing children and romanticizing mental health issues and domestic abuse is very much i don't even know the word to describe it because it's just not true i feel like the people are not listening to her music they're only just listening to how it sounds and her aesthetic and going from there but i digress strawberry shortcake touches on toxic beauty standards and rape culture girls we were taught by our mothers our fathers brothers uncles aunties teachers principals etc that a we should be seen and not heard b to avoid the unwanted male gaze we need to dress appropriately and c we need to look a certain type of way because being beautiful means conforming to societal beauty standards of that time i can't even count the amount of times on my hands how my mom always used to tell me that i need to be seen and not heard or my dad telling me and my sisters that we needed to change an outfit or being told that i needed to call my mom and bring me a change of pants because i was wearing tights like everybody else but me wearing them was inappropriate. Melanie talks about these issues that women and girls go through in this song, as well as how women are constantly blamed for their own SA. See, in the video, Melanie Martinez has a cake skirt where she's at the top of it and boys are trying to eat away at it to get to her. In my opinion, this is an ironic homage to Marie Antoinette's Let Them Eat Cake or Bread. Welcome to Fun Facts with Faith. Today, we are going to be talking about Marie Antoinette. Now, Marie Antoinette was an Austrian princess born November 2nd, 1755 in Vienna, who was married to King Louis XVI of France. She was known as a gambler, winning and losing lots of money, a singer, a harp player, and a fashionista. She is also famously known for her extravagant lifestyle, her glamorous balls and wigs, and for allegedly saying, I'm going to butcher this in French, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, so allegedly she said, Qu'il mange de la brioche, which translates to let them eat bread, but was somehow changed to let them eat cake. I think it was a translation error. And her allegedly saying this led to the French Revolution in 1789. The cake skirt, in my opinion, represents the female flesh and how it is enticing to people that weren't taught no means no or chooses to take things that is not theirs. It's also like a display piece for judgment and ridicule of others. Melanie also talks about how women are constantly blamed or scrutinized for their own essay. In 2013, a 24-year-old woman working at a Pennsylvania state prison was essayed by an inmate and a senior deputy attorney general responded to her lawsuit by saying that the way she acted contributed to her essay. Another example is in 2013, a 16-year-old girl was essayed by two boys while passed out at a party, but because they were star athletes, the entire community called the victim a train whore. I think what I find crazier about this story is that the victim herself 
didn't find out what happened to her until reading about it in her local newspaper after videos of what happened to her had already started circulating online. And the entire town tried to cover it up. It's a sad tale that's as old as time, unfortunately. And Melanie addresses these issues in Strawberry Shortcake and how we've come to think and accept the victim blaming mentality. She also touches on the flawed mentality we have as women due to societal beauty standards that were created by men. We're taught all these different things that we need to look good, we need to be put together, cute, neat, hairless in certain places, you know, wax if you have to. Don't be enticing because you'll attract the wrong kind of attention, which will then make you a slut all for the male gaze. And this song brings up these important conversations that honestly still need to be had to this day. Lunchbox Friends is about having 9 to 5 friendships or to simplify it, it's about having fake friends that only last during school hours. In the film, Kelly invites Crybaby into her friend group that only lasts until the school day is over. Kelly and her quote unquote friends only are around each other at school and don't really have anything in common besides a lunch table to gossip at. And Crybaby doesn't want this kind of false friendship. She wants a friendship where she can not only be herself, free of judgment, but that'll also make an impact on her life in the long run. She's looking for long-term friendships, not school friendships. Orange Juice, in my opinion, is more of like a conversation from Melanie to the fans that struggle with eating disorders and body dysmorphia. In the film, when Crabby realizes that Floor also has powers like her and Angelita and Celeste and Magnolia, she follows Floor and Kelly to the bathroom during the food fight that she started. Here is where Crabby realizes that Floor has an eating disorder after overhearing Kelly basically coach Floor into throwing up her food. And instead of judging Floor or contradicting her feelings with backhanded positivity, she accepts Floor for who she is and helps Floor become a more self-confident and self-loving person. Now, while doing some research for this song, I found that the only issue listeners had with the song, even those who really didn't listen to the song but know of the song and are not like Melody Martinez fans, on r slash ed anonymous was how melanie oversimplified bulimia to make it look more palatable i can't really speak on this topic because i don't have an eating disorder but if you maybe have or know someone that does have an eating disorder and are open to talking about it you know let me know down in the comment section below and because i really want to get some insight into how you guys felt about orange juice now, even though orange juice doesn't show the darker struggles of having ED, like bulimia, it does touch on what it can be like to have it in a way that is simple for her younger audience to digest and understand. I know that in high school, I was 100% unaware of subjects like this. So watching K-12 through definitely opened my mind up to want to do research and to gain some insight on what it might be like to have ED and the symptoms of the different types of eating disorders that people have. Detention is my favorite song on the album. My whole outfit for the uh, trilogy tour was detention inspired and I was upset that detention was not on the set list, but I digress. Detention is about feelings of vulnerability and suppression while being in the spotlight, which is very similar to uh, show and tell. See, Melanie as an artist is under public scrutiny and criticism because of who she is and her career. Once you become a celebrity, your life is under constant scrutiny and people are looking at you from a magnifying glass. They're watching your every move. And this is the downside of being a public figure which is what Melanie is talking about in this song. I think a really good example is what's happening with her merch. See, last year, I think 
Melanie launched her own set of Portos perfume for $250. Now, that's not one perfume by itself. It is the full set. And it comes with like four like really big bales of perfume for $250. And then she launched a set of candles this year that are $75 a piece. And I personally would not buy that candle for $75. I've actually seen people on TikTok make the candle themselves. So I, I think that's saying something. And even when she came back for the release of her Portals album, I was so confused on what she was doing and why. Like, she was... I didn't get it at all. So, uh, yeah, I think another example is Doja Cat dating who she's dating right now. You know, Megan Thee Stallion when she was shot by Tory Lanez and how everybody was trying to dissect and see if she was lying or if she was telling the truth. Holly Bailey dating DDG. Oh, my God. I can say 100%. I was one of those people... Who did not want her to date DDG after the Ruby Rose situation? I fully say that with my chest. Um, Britney Spears during her Justin Timberlake breakup and how the media was literally tearing Britney apart for cheating on Justin. Even though Justin cheated on her multiple times throughout their relationship. Like, oh my god. Uh, Justin Bieber and his relationship with Hailey Baldwin, who is now Hailey Bieber. That is still ongoing. People are so convinced that he does not love his wife. And honestly, I am on that side. Uh, <laughs> the list can go on and on, but we're going to go ahead and move on. Teacher's Pet is about inappropriate student-teacher relationships. Students are sometimes groomed into being into relationships with their teachers and are brainwashed into believing that they have power in the relationship, which is 100% not true in my opinion. In the film, Angelita is in a relationship with her teacher who ends up trying to dissect her. See, he was only using Angelita to feed his own obsession in the film and Crybaby is able to save her just in time and Angelita is able to get her revenge. However, the song's lyrics paint a more graphic picture of Angelita's quote-unquote relationship with her teacher. See, the teacher actually made the first move on Angelita because he knew that she had a crush on him and he used his power as her teacher to abuse her trust in him as his student. In their quote-unquote relationship, Angelita is his secret that he wants to control. He tells her that he loves her and that she's special to him, but he can't have a public relationship with her because A, it's illegal, and B, he has a family. See, he has a wife and kids, and Angelita begins to question why he's even with her in the first place if he is only going to hide her. She starts to feel trapped between wanting to make the relationship work and leaving. Even though she knows that the relationship isn't going to last, she still wants to try and make it work. She eventually ends things with him due to his controlling ways. Melanie dives into the reality that is student-teacher inappropriate relationships. She doesn't oversimplify or glorify them either. And the point of view is told from Angelita, the student, and her experience with being groomed by her teacher that only used and wanted to control her. It is definitely one of the darker songs on the album with much more darker imagery, but a lot of people can probably relate to this song because there are people who have experienced something like this. I think that was the only quarrel people had with the song was that it really went to a dark place and people that really, you know, don't listen to Mel religiously took issue with is that it was just much darker than what they were used to from Mel. And I personally think that the darker aspect of this song really creates a captivating story to tell from Angelita's point of view who is in this relationship with her teacher that is only using her for sexual gratification. I think Melanie was able to paint this picture really well without the theme of the song getting lost in translation. 
High School Sweethearts is about Crybaby's expectations and boundaries in her next relationship. In the Crybaby album, Crybaby was not only in a toxic relationship, but she ended up in another relationship with Johnny that he wasn't mentally prepared for. High School Sweethearts is Crybaby telling her future partner that she wants a healthy, loving, long-term relationship free of judgment, cheating, and one-sidedness. And if they can't handle her and everything that she comes with, don't waste anybody's time. Recess is the last song on the album and it is played at the end of the film, K-12. Recess is about making time for yourself and avoiding burnout. It touches on the importance of cutting off toxic friendships and finding the peace in all of the chaos. Recess also touches on Melanie's experience as an artist in the music industry. In the beginning of Melanie's career, she was more of an independent artist and then she signed to Atlantic Records. If Melanie were to ever become unprofitable in the industry that she's in due to her mental health, then she would most likely be replaced. That is what Recess touches on and it gives us a little sneak peek or a look behind the curtains, if you will, at what it's like to be in the spotlight in such a business that can become very saturated. K through 12 as a whole album not only touches on jealousy and corrupt officials as well as bullying, toxic gender roles, rape culture, eating disorders, and predatory teachers, K through 12 is Melanie's outlet into stardom, in my opinion. She touches on the struggles with being in the entertainment industry and how she copes with everything. K through 12 is not only a political piece, it's also a look inside Melanie's life as an artist. She opens up to us, the fans and listeners, about how she feels more like a commodity in the music industry. In my opinion, K-12 is the best album that Melanie has made. It's not only a continuation of the Crybaby Saga, which I love to talk about. K-12 gives us a look into Mel's life and how hard it can be for her as a mainstream artist. If you made it this far in the video, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!